But what we want to do with plants, ideally, we'd love to have a south-facing window. So mm -hmm. let's check the compass. According to the compass, that's a south-facing window, and that lets in a lot of light. Unfortunately, it's right over the kitchen sink. No, that's not going to work. Okay, then we'll switch to a west-facing window, which would be this one. It's not going to let in quite as much light as that one. We could work with that. What do you think about taking this area right here and doing a planting right there? I'd, I'd love it. Let's try it. Let's go pick out some plants. Garden centers sell all kinds of beautiful tropical plants, but many require a lot of light to grow well. We're looking for low light plants that would naturally grow in the understory of trees. Some of the rules for outside gardening apply to the inside too, like layering tall and short plants. We also want a variety of leaf sizes and textures and a variety of colors. Got it okay? Yeah, I think it'll look good right here. Yeah, slide it in a little bit. Now this is a Kenchia palm. You see it a lot in the islands and this is gonna anchor our corner. I wanted to give you a low maintenance planting. So one thing we're gonna do is give you a self-watering pot. Self-watering, how does it work? Take a look up here. I have another one right here. Here's the pot and we take and set this base in and underneath it, it creates a reservoir which is gonna hold water. Next, we put in the gauge itself and slides in. Now, this is going to work like a dipstick in a car. When it's full, it's going to come up. Right. And as it goes down, it'll just give you a different measurement so you know. When it comes time to water, you pop this off and the water just goes right in here. Easy enough. Now, the next thing to do is to put this stone in on top of the plate. Now, we're just going to dump it all in. I'm going to spread it all out evenly. Now we're ready for the plant, and the plant we're going to put in is this philodendron. I recognize that. My grandmother had one of those in her garden. Well, we're going to do two things here. We're going to put it into a self-watering pot, and we're also going to put it in a larger pot to give it room to grow. Okay, and I want to set it in here just to see how the height is. You can see where it's an inch or so below the top yep. of the pot. Well, that's great because it'll hold water, and this is the perfect height for the plant to go in. Before we plant it, what I want to do is bring it over here and just loosen up all the roots to make sure they're not pot-bound and they'll grow out into the new soil we're going to put in the pot. It's not too bad. Rowan, would you take and grab a couple handfuls of this soil mix right here? This is good? Yeah, two of those. Okay. And I took some of the soil off the bottom of this. I don't want it to be too low. All right, now I'm going to set the plant in. And that looks pretty good at that height I want to be at. So if you just take a couple handfuls and start packing it around the plant. And I take and pack it in a little as you go around, okay? Okay. okay. Now I'm going to turn it so you can we keep going all the way around the plant. Make sure you fill it all the way up to the height of the ball. It looks good. For the first few months, you're going to have to water these plants from the top until those roots grow down into that water reservoir in the bottom. Then you can start using our filler tube. Rowan, do you recognize this one? Yeah, I do. In Jamaica, these grow up in the trees. This is a bromeliad, and it actually uses its roots for structure on the trees to hold it in place, not gather moisture. It actually gets moisture from the humidity in the air. And also, see in the center here, there's a little cup that fills up with rainwater and it feeds the rest of the plant. All right, so I'm just going to take it out of the pot. Mm -hmm. you know, that's not too bad, but we're still going to loosen the roots a little bit by hand. All right, and here I'm going to give you the potting material. Okay. I'm going to set it in place. And now I do the same thing you did with the other one. All the way around and push it down in. Now this mix is different than the other one we use. This is really, really coarse. You can see the big pieces of bark in here. Yeah. This wants to dry out rather quickly. All right, that's pretty good there. I'm going to spin this around so you can get to the other side. Yeah, thank you. Okay. That looks pretty good. You want to grab the watering can? Sure. I'm going to take the bromeliad and I'm going to put it in this plastic saucer so that if any water does drain through the bottom, it'll get caught and not injure the floor. They can put water that really lightly all the I'm way around, just a little bit. Okay, now what you want to do is just put a little bit right here in the center. 
And now see, that's just like a rainfall and it'll just take and go down and plant and water it. Wow. Now over here we introduced a table which we have these plants on. We have a fern that's going to hang over the edge here. Another bromeliad, look at the flower on that. That's pretty amazing, huh? Amazing. amazing. And a begonia here, and you can see it has a little pink flower on it. And here, a Phalaenopsis orchid or the moth orchid. Now this is a really common orchid. People ask about repotting them all the time. You don't repot them when they're in flower. Fortunately, we have one that's not flowering that we can repot. If you take a look, so this one yeah. here. All right, I'm gonna slide this container off. No. Yeah, they're really tight, but they good and green, they're really healthy looking. We want to take out as much of this old sphagnum moss as we can before we repot it in new sphagnum moss. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use an orchid pot. You see all the holes? It provides a lot of air circulation to all these roots that are going to be in there. Just take some of that moss and pack it all the way around. Now this orchid is like the bromeliads. The roots don't grow in soil. This sphagnum moss will give it structure and allow the water to get into the roots. Now, the biggest problem we have with orchids is people overwatering. Yeah. You want to wait till the sphagnum moss gets crunchy on the outside, take it over to the sink, give it a good soaking, let it drain, and then wait for it to dry out. You want to drop that right on that stand right there. That anthurium looks perfect there, doesn't it? Oh, it looks gorgeous. We have to remember that these plants come from a tropical location and they love high humidity. So we need to help create that. During the winter, especially a house dries out with all the hot air we're pumping into it. So to create humidity, we're gonna take a bucket like this, yeah. put it on top of your radiator, and it'll cause the water to evaporate and add humidity to the air. So make sure you keep some water in that. We can't put plants on top of this because it fluctuates so much that the plants wouldn't do well with that fluctuating temperature. And one last thing you can do for the plants is to spritz them. Just remember not to spray the flowers on the orchid. Mm -hmm.